Hi, I'm Tom Farmer in Singapore, and welcome to Pathways of Hope. Today's gospel from Matthew 24 is a reminder from Jesus <clears throat> to be ready for his return. Verses 42 to 51, Jesus said to his disciples, Stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on his arrival finds doing so. Amen, I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is long delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkards, the servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish him severely and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Lord Jesus, speak to us. Be ready. When? Now. If we don't know when he will come, then we must be ready now. How can we be ready later? <laughs> the attitude must be, be ready now. Uh, because always is a series of nows, okay? So let's be ready now. So what if Jesus comes right now? Are we ready? So what's our checklist usually? What love God, love my neighbor as myself, uh, forgive those who trespass against us, read the Bible, pray, go to church. Okay, that's our sort of readiness checklist maybe. Uh, and that's that's a good place. <laughs> that's a good, uh, good list. Um, Jesus gives us more about being ready in this passage. So let's see what new insights uh, Jesus gives us uh, about being ready for his return. Okay, first of all, a strong defense, okay? It's been said in sports that the best offense is a strong defense. Jesus said, if the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So. First thing Jesus is telling us is we, we got to stay awake and not let our house be broken into. What's he talking about? A real thief and really our physical house? No. We must protect ourselves, our mind, body, soul, our families, our homes. Okay? This is the first half of what he's talking about. Don't lose what you've got. Don't lose what you've got. Um, we must protect ourselves from anything ungodly. You know, the world, the flesh, and the devil are our mortal enemies, and we must not let them in. Example, when you turn on the TV and you see a show that is glorifying, uh, you know, this K-pop group or idolizes uh, this celebrity or glamorizes violence or wealth or fleshly beauty, um, change the channel. Evil enters our mind through our eyes and our ears. And once it's in our minds, it can take root and grow into sin. And the wages of sin is death. So first, let's be careful. Don't let your mind be broken into. Guard your mind and guard the gateway to your mind, which is your eyes and your ears. Okay. Secondly, don't just guard your mind, guard your heart. Be careful who you trust. Mike Tyson, likely the fiercest heavyweight boxer in history, once said that not all those who fight with you are your enemies, and not all those who like you are your friends. Pretty profound words from a, from a fighter. What this says is uh, choose your friends carefully. The scripture tells us to trust God. The scripture doesn't really say trust people, okay? In fact, it says put not your trust in princes or kings, Okay, always trust God. Choose your friends carefully. The best source of love is your family. Now, if your family is broken or you don't find love there, 
Pray for healing. Do your best to restore peace. Also, find a Christian community, okay? Uh, this could be your church, all right? See, uh, see in your church community if you can find uh, the love and support that you need. Uh, if not, look for a Christian community that is not a church, but members go to their churches, uh, but they form a, an intentional Christian community to create this environment where we are brothers and sisters, and it's an environment to help us live our Christian lives well. So guard your heart. Be careful who you trust. Don't trust in BTS because they just dis disbanded anyway. Uh, don't put your trust in uh, this politician or this dynasty in your country or whatever it is. No, 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 no. Put your trust in God alone. But we do need to surround ourselves with good people. All right. So let's guard our mind, guard our heart, good defense. It's just like not letting the house be broken into, okay? Don't let the thief come in and steal. And the evil one wants to steal our hearts, steal our minds, and um, deny us being uh, ready for the Lord's coming. The second half of the passage teaches us about service and humility, okay? So in the second half of the passage today, Jesus said, Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at the proper time. Now, let's get this image right, okay? I've been in Asia 15 years now, and many times in my work, I have seen a similar image of, you know, servants distributing food, but here it's the big boss sitting at the head of the table, having his glass filled first, the fish head is his, okay? Everyone gives him face, no one disagrees with him, Okay, I've seen in my corporate life here in Asia for 15 years where the management team had their own executive dining room with wooden armchairs where the servants, however, serve food to the bosses, their daily four course, three or four course meal for lunch, while 300 other workers eat in the regular cafeteria on benches or plastic chairs. Okay, now with respect, I believe Jesus is painting a different picture here. Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master has put in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at the proper time? Okay, so in God's kingdom, a servant is not one who seeks to be served by other servants, but he himself is the faithful and prudent servant who distributes or serves the other people, the other servants. One of the titles of the Pope, by the way, the Catholic Pope is Servus servorum dei, or servant of the servants of God. All right, that is right out of this passage in uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew, what is it, 24. So we want to be servant to the servants of God. Okay, so if there are any of you who are management, executives, big bosses, okay, next time you enter the executive dining room, to be waited upon by servants, <coughs> distributing your lunch at the proper time. Remember this passage, which says that when the Lord comes, it should be you whom Jesus should find serving others on his return. At work, okay, those of you who eat in the executive dining room, why not pick a day, one year, one day a year, when you seat the servants at the executive dining table and have the executives serve them? And may that be the day that the Lord comes and finds you so doing. Be a servant leader. Read the original book on servant leadership by Robert Greenleaf. I read it nearly 40 years ago, and it helped shape my attitudes. I later became a head, head coordinator servant in my own Christian community, serving the uh, overall leaders of our community. And even today, I serve within my Christian community here in Singapore. So let's keep ourselves always ready. Always means right now. OK, if we're ready now, we're serving, we're guarding our mind and our heart, we'll always be ready. God bless you. If you found this uh, helpful, uh, like, subscribe, share it. Have a great day. Ahead.